Okay, so let's have a look at a tuple. <clears throat> tuple is a pair of information, single bracket. First is a string, second is an int. I've started typing it on the screen. Um, called uh, created a function called betters. That's my first tuple. That's my second tuple. That's my return type. Let's define the parameters. Um, and so the first will be student one. Call it std one, and that's going to put grade one. I'm just using slightly different letters from the um, lecture notes just to give you a slight variation, but nothing really, really significant. And so the first question is, if grade one, i.e. the grade which belongs to the first tuple is greater than the, the grade of the second student, then the result will be student one will be returned. Our second guard will simply say otherwise Otherwise, we will return student two. Nice and straightforward function there. Um, let's open up our um, console. So this is written in a file of my main.hs. I'm now going to execute that file. Obviously, all the loading of files is something I'm avoiding spending any time with here, but you would typically have to do all of that as you work through your code. So parameter one has to be a tuple. So I need both pairs of brackets and a second pair of brackets. So let's give it, let's feed in some data. I've got a, a name and a value. So if the name is, um, and the second one is for those Disney fans. Um, Let's see, evaluate. Well, it says that Jasmine is the winner and this is the particular better student than Ali. Um, if we said um, Jack and Jill, for example, if we change the values, this Jack got 344, clearly has the higher grade and so on. So we find a very, very simple way to do this. The point here is that I'm passing a tuple as a parameter. I can pick it apart inside my function, pick each of the individual values, because when I throw them in as parameters, I've got a reference to them inside my statements and my evaluations. Now, I've got something also which allows you to define what are called synonyms. So if I don't want to keep on typing this in as a, as a data type, this tuple, I can define my own type, a synonym. So I could call it student grade. And essentially, if I let that represent this pattern, I can then very, very simply take that new type and replace that tuple with it and that tuple. And so it will implicitly, I uh, didn't like that. Can you see why? I close that bracket. Can you see that that student grade as a type actually is a synonym for that tuple, which means that the same logic still continues and allows me to use it. Let's also look then at a couple of variations on this um, and perhaps out going through the lecture notes, um, what I notice is perhaps quite an important one is the ability to return, have the result as a tuple. So consider this. Um, let's say that I create a function called diff and I pass it um, two values, two integer values. But I want to return a tuple. Now this object-oriented languages like Java is actually quite, you know, by defining the type it's very common also in other programming languages as well. So let's spell it out. First parameter x, second parameter y. First condition, if x is less than, um, or let's say x is greater than or equal to y, then um, the result will be x, y. Let's just say that this is some kind of potentially links to some sorting concept. Otherwise, I don't have to spell out any more detail. The result will be in the other way round. Okay, so let's run at my difference function and pass it 
to values to evaluate three four or three because four is greater than three uh if i do 45 five oops 45 six up oh, and i've popped a comma in there bear with me a second again the tuple result is the largest number first so we can have crucial concept um, is to allow tuples also to function as returns okay let's finish this particular uh, introductory video by looking at lists lists are the functional program equivalent to arrays array if you remember was the concept of a single type of data and holding multiple values so that's an example of a, a number or an integer array that's a string array and there's some interesting simple properties that it's worth just pointing out some of these relationships you can throw the type statement at a list um, and it will tell you the type of data that that list will do so let's just have a quick test of that I can use my type checking statement and if I just put a simple um, series of integers over here you can see what it is doing it is telling me the type that I have within it uh, another way of illustrating that might be if I just use true false false what does it come back here it comes back with a boolean type and so on so you know i can analyze and i can pick apart what's inside it there is also something called an empty list which is just the close open and close bracket um finally just to come to the end of this there's a quick simple relationship between strings and characters and a thing that a concept you might have noticed from python um because other characters of other languages have inherited this concept is that if we think of the string hello it is also equivalent to a list like this each of a list of individual characters making up that for those of you who have studied python you will have noticed that relationship um, in the language and it allows you to iterate through this so there's quite an important observation later on it will become more useful so the crucial elements in this particular introduction is that you can have synonyms you can use tuples as both parameter and as return type and um, we will then move on to lists and some of the sophistication and complexity of 